once again, good morning. My name is Brother Clive Simpson, Speed Life International Ministry. Welcome this morning to morning daily morning devotions. We are doing John chapter 18 this morning from verse 4 to 6. There are three verses this morning according to the leading of the Holy Spirit, God's presence upon our lives. Verse 4. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that would come upon him, went forward and said to them, Whom are you seeking? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he, and, G and Judas, who betrayed him, also stood with them. Verse 6. Now when he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The power and the authority of words. You and I may speak a word, and it has no effect on the very person whom we are speaking to. But the level of authority determines the outcome of what we speak in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yet, the Lord, they are coming after the Lord to take him, to crucify him. So here in verse 4, the Lord didn't wait until they come and ask for him. <laughs> he went to them and asked them, who are you seeking for? Or who are you seeking? This is very bold. Hmm. But God has given us a spirit not of timidity, <coughs> the Bible says, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Faith faces fear. <coughs> and where there is faith in that atmosphere, you are in authority. The Lord knew exactly everything and even all of those who was coming after him. As a matter of fact, there is creation. He created them all. But he knows that this is the, to fulfill scripture. So here in, what well, as he says to them, whom are you seeking? Whom are you seeking? He went to them. Many of us, we know it, if we see a whole army coming after us. We're going to run and hide. It's worse if we know exactly why they are coming. We're going to run for our lives. Are we going to fall down that moment and begin to pray? Because we do not know what the outcome of our life is going to be. But the Lord do knows. And he went and confronted his enemies. Those who intent and bent on evil. He went to them. And ask them, who are you seeking? And the scripture says in verse in verse 5, they answered him and said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said to them, I am he. I am he. <laughs> I am. I remember in the whole scriptures in the Bible when in Genesis when the Lord was sending Moses to Egypt to speak to Pharaoh. And Moses said to the Lord, Um Shaddai tell them that sent me. And he said, Tell them, tell Pharaoh, I am that I am. I am that I am. I looked up that word many, many years back, and the word is Aya Asha Aya. Aya Asha Aya. You can write it down. Aya Asha Aya. I am that I am. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is everything and anything and can be everything and all things to all men as needed to be. You cannot confine him. You cannot bind him because he is the I am that I am. Today, God can be 
the one that prospers you. Today, tomorrow, God can be the one that heals you. Jehovah Rapha. He manifests himself to you according to your need. I am that I am. In this moment when he says to them, I am, the spirit that is within man, the spirit speaks and says, answer to them, I am. God is the one that answered to them and said, I am. And the Bible said now in verse 6, the moment he said, I am. Now when, they, when he said to them, I am, they drew back and fell to the ground. Because who? God speaks. And when God speaks, even the sun, the moon, and the stars listens. Much less men. They listens. So in that moment when he said, I am, and they fall back, you tell me now. <laughs> if it wasn't for the work on the cross that he had to do to die on our behalf for our sins, could he not have said something even much more and they all would have died? He just simply said, I am. And the scripture said they all fall. Because of the power of his authority. And they knew. I am pretty sure they were pretty shook at this moment when they hear that voice. And then they got to know that voice in that moment was not the voice of a man, but the voice of God that speaks. <clears throat> Beloved, walk in faith. Live in faith. Move in faith. Because the Lord your God, who is a spirit, the Lord your God, whom all might and power belongs to, when your enemy comes at you, as long as you belong to him and he, you are his vessel, he will speak through you to your enemy and they all will fall back this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ this morning. Amen. Move in faith. Move in faith. Not fear. Move in faith. We are called to live by faith. To move by faith. The enemy is always looking for an opportunity to intimidate and drive fear into our heart. But when we know whose we are and who we are, determines the outcome of what the enemy plans. All things work together for the good, for them that love the Lord and is called according to his purpose and his plan for their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Walk in faith. Live by faith. Speak by faith. Because even when you do this, the Lord said, when you live by faith and you speak by faith, you will say to the mountain, mountain be removed and be cast into the sea and it will be done. That's how powerful it is when, you, when your life is a life of the faithful and you have a, you live in an atmosphere of faithfulness and you move in an atmosphere of faith, knowing that God is ever with you, is ever present in time of need. In faith, nothing is impossible to them that love the Lord and is called according to his purpose and his plan in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Beloved, these people, a whole army coming after one man. And not only that, he is innocent. So you know God will be on your side when the battle is on fear. The enemy never fights fear. He always come with a whole host and witnesses to lie and to say all manner of evil against you because the intent is to steal, kill, and to destroy your purpose and plan that God have for your life 
It is that he comes to steal and to kill and to destroy everything that God has put inside of you so that you can attain victory and bring glory and honor to his name. This morning, beloved, there are many of you right now, the enemy is on you, is overwhelming you, is trying to mess up your mind, is trying to fill you with doubt as to make you believe that it is not God who say for you to get that thing done. Beloved, as long as heaven is with you, whatever God places in your heart, you have to make believers out of people. People is not going to believe for you just like that. You have to make them believe you. You have to get the work done. And as you get the work done and your mind is set and you are with the Lord and the Lord is with your beloved. Believe you me, your enemy will stand back and see the salvation of God upon your life because you are living by faith, moving in faith, and you are making faith work for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. You have to convince them. People are not going to just believe you just like that. And there are a lot of people when they begin to see you begin to move by faith and getting things done, there are many who will seek to destroy the very work that you're doing. My mind goes back to Nehemiah. When the children of Israel were given the opportunity to leave Babylon and go back to Israel, and Nehemiah was given the assignment to rebuild Jerusalem and all that, there was a whole host of them, their own brethren, who try in every way to deter and to destroy the very work. Of rebuilding Jerusalem. Yes, they did. So much so that they were well, as they work, they have to have the, the, the tool on one side and they have to have a weapon on the other side. Beloved, we are dealing with a battle, and the battle is for our soul. Never go out into this world and not be prepared to fight. Never go out in this world and not and, and, and be nonchalant because the devil, the enemy, ain't playing. He's looking for every opportunity to kill your joy, to steal your joy, to deter and determine you to drive you crazy. Anything he can do, as long as you do not accomplish the work and plan and purpose God has placed within you to bring glory and honor to his name and to prosper you so that you walk up and live in a victorious life. Are you hearing me this morning? If he did it then to, J to Nehemiah, hallelujah. They did it then with Moses. They did it then with Daniel. These men were living for God. But the enemy was planning in so many ways. Look at, look at Daniel, Shadrach, Michigan, Abednego. These men were praying men of God, living God's purpose and plan. But yet still those in principalities and power and high places were planning on every way to destroy them for who they are and who they represent. Do you think the enemy will not be also be after you? If the world loves you, you're not of God. It is when you're living holy and want to do the things for God, that's when you get a fight. That's when the fight is really on. The enemy is going to come at you in every which way possible to intimidate you, to drive fear into you, so that you may compromise and give in. Because the thing the enemy knows, one thing, a couple of things, he knows what heaven is like. And for you to get there, he don't want you to go there. Because one thing for him for sure, he knows you'll never get back there. He live in constant eternal regret for the day he think within himself he could be like the most like God. So misery love company. So therefore it, it is his desire to do whatever he can do to make sure none of us get to heaven. But we have a savior, we have a God and we have a king who is with us by faith. That as we trust and believe in him and we focus on our destiny and our call, 
even in the midst of our enemies, he will provide a table before us. Hallelujah. He will provide a table before us. Here the Lord Jesus Christ, on his way to the cross, about to be suffered, and each and every one of these men, even though in their mind and in their heart, oh, it is over for him. It is done. They already don't know what exactly what the plan and purpose they have in their mind to do to him. But what they do not know is what they plan to do with him. God have a whole nother plan and a surprise for them because all things work together for the good. The great I am who speaks and they fall back today is with me and you. And as he speaks through us, when we are bombarded and, sur and surrounded by those whose intent upon evil to destroy us, all we have to do is let the Lord speak through us. By his authority and power, all those who seek to destroy us, they too will fall back because of the power of the word that God speak through us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. So this morning, beloved, do not be intimidated or troubled, whether you're on your job or wherever you are. Do not be troubled this morning. Know that the great I am, the one that Moses that Moses asked, what's your name? And watch that tell Pharaoh. The one who take the children of Israel out of Pharaoh's grip and harm, that I am that I am. He is with you today. By his presence and by his spirit, he is with you today. And what seems to be impossible for you, he will make it all possible. All you have to do is trust and believe and call upon his name and allow him to work in your life. Less of you, more of him. And as he worked through your life this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, no matter what it is or who it is, they too will fall back and you will see the salvation and power of your Lord and your God upon your life as you walk in spirit and you open your eyes so you can see in the spirit that God is God and he is one and his name is Jesus Christ this morning. May God bless you. May God make his face shine upon you and be gracious upon you and may you see his power and his peace and his grace and favor upon your life this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless.